an epic new payload to unlock Windows boxes with a bash bunny using a little SMB brute force action, this time on Hack 5. Hello and welcome to Hack 5, my name is Darren Kitchen, it's your weekly dose of Technolist and I'm so excited because we have a very special guest on this week's episode and I am stoked because we're cracking passwords. It's like one of the mainstays of hacking, it's so relevant, it never gets old, it's always so fun and why are we still relying on things we know to log into machines. But anyway, typically when we talk about cracking passwords on Windows boxes, we're, we're doing like brute force attacks on ye old uh, land manager hashes of some sort and variations thereof. Hooray for Kerberos. Anyway, point is, it's typically an offline brute force attack. We get a little token, we take it over to a machine, we throw some GPUs at it, Bob's your uncle. But today we're asking the question, what about online brute force attacks, right? What about that stuff that we see in the movies where the hero goes up to the unsuspecting machine and plugs something in and lights flash and suddenly like, boom, it logs in on the live running system. Is that even possible or practical? And yes, as it turns out, the, the, the answer is yes. And here to explain exactly that is a good friend of the show, Ken, AKA Catatonic Prime. So Ken, that proof of concept video that you sent by email was like literally the stuff of movies. I, I'm seeing a Bash Bunny plugged into a Windows box, a, a couple of lights blink, and, and next thing you know, the thing is logged in, and it's just like, wait, what? I showed it to the rest of the developers, and I'm like, hey guys, you wanna you wanna guess how this works? And they're all like, magic. <laughs> um, so so what exactly is this magic? So this magic is uh, is really just a classic attack um, reimagined for the modern age, especially for the modern pen tester. Uh, I just took the sort of age old password guessing dictionary attacks for any workstation and uh, we brought it to the Bash Bunny. So, so where, where did you start with that? What was the journey to build this payload? So, so the journey to build this payload, I started out, um, I had done some code stuff for THC Hydra, which is a password guessing tool, uh, very popular. It's definitely one of the older tools as well. And while I was using it, I thought, man, this could really apply to a Bash Bunny. This would be really cool. So I tried it out on the Bash Bunny and it kind of worked. Uh, I had some problems with it and I had those problems. This was a couple of years ago um, and I didn't really find a good solution to those. And I'm not good enough of a C developer to rewrite an SMB thing. Uh, oh, by the way, it uses SMB. That's the real magic, right? Uh, uses the RNDIS HID or RD. Oh, my f God. Yeah, yeah, the, the RNDIS <laughs> Ethernet RNDIS adapter. RNDIS Ethernet adapter. Yeah, that's a beautiful <laughs> idea. Bring your own network. That way there's yeah. no logs on the firewall because it's yeah. your network. That's You got it. Okay, so it uses the RDN, uh, RDNIS network uh, to bring your own network and it um, attacks over SMB. So the first thing it does is it uses nmap to scan the host to see if it's listening on port 445, the SMB port. And if it finds that it is, then it goes ahead and starts attempting to authenticate. Um, if it discovers a valid password for the username and password combination that you're looking for, then uh, it saves that password and can use the hit functionality to type it in and unlock the machine. That's pretty cool. And I'm looking through the payload right now and I'm noticing that you're actually doing a dot slash MSF console. Oh, wait a second, use auxiliary scanner, SMB, SMB login. You're setting our hosts and I've watched enough Metasploit Minute to know where this is going. Ken, what'd you do? Uh, well, we I followed a few other people's blogs, uh, kind of aggregated uh, several of them into a thing, put Metasploit on my device, and then using that Metasploit installation, we can use SMB, uh, the auxiliary SMB login scanner, or yeah, S scanner, is it a scanner? It is a scanner, yes. Use the SMB login scanner to uh, check various usernames and passwords. Okay, but you said you started out originally using Hydra. What made you change from using Hydra to using Metasploit in your payload? This is an excellent question. Uh, Hydra is limited to SMB version one, which ever since 2017, which is when I originally started this project and is also the year of WannaCry, uh, SMB version one has been kind of going the way of the dodo in a lot of corporate networks uh, where GPOs can be assigned to remove SMB version one. Uh, so the SMB login scanner in Metasploit can do SMB v1 and SMB v2. 
So for more modern systems uh, using SMB v2 or even SMB v3, um, Metasploit meets that need. It's able to perform those authentications and check to find valid credentials, whereas Hydra just can't right now. And like I said, I'm not a good enough developer in C to rewrite an SMB v2 thing in Hydra. Yeah, but you know that's the beauty of standing on the shoulders of giants and being able to use these off-the-shelf tools. I mean, Metasploit is a fantastic framework for just that. And dare I might ask, as I eat my own dog food, uh, Metasploit on the Bash Bunny. How was that adventure? It was uh, it was a little rough at times. Um, even following other people's blog posts to get it on there and to run it, it worked fine. You follow the blog post and it works. And it's no problem as long as you're SSH'd in or serialed onto the, onto the Bash Bunny, it is fine. But actually getting it to run in a payload, it doesn't have enough environment variables set and various things. Uh, that was the biggest hurdle that I had was getting the environment set. I could log in directly. I could run the SMB login scanner. I could get my results all just on a shell, like that, an interactive shell. But my thought was, this isn't useful if you're on a pen testing engagement and you're sitting in an office. Um, maybe you can't take a laptop in, but maybe you can sneak in a flash drive. That's where the Bash Bunny comes in, and it really needs to be able to be standalone. You shouldn't really need to have an extra machine with you to do the attack. If you had the extra machine with you, then you could just plug it in, potentially, and just attack that way in a normal fashion. Uh, yeah, not so everybody... I see here in the payload, you've had to, you know, your, your solution to this is you're running the actual, you're saying, hey, Metasploit, go ahead and use this auxiliary scanner. And, you know, here's the environment variables that you need, which are using, you know, the target's IP address. And uh, and you're actually allowing people to specify like, oh, here's, you know, my, my, um, my word list and my user list that I actually want you to run. And then you're just piping all of that output to a, uh, to a log file. You know, you're, you're in your loot directory. And this MSF console.txt, I see here you're just using this, uh, you're, you're just grepping through, right? That's absolutely it. Just keep it simple. And I, I guess that, that was, you know, that's a pretty cool snippet because what you've done here is you've really opened up so many possibilities to use the hundreds of exploits and post modules and scanners and everything else that is built into the beautiful framework that is Metasploit. Uh, in that, hey, if you run it this way and you just get through the logs for something you're expecting, uh, you can get a systematic result. And, and like you said, so much better than sitting there with a laptop in real time, a lot more discreet to be able to just rock up with a with a bunny. Uh, but I will say, and I, and I agree with you, um, as someone who has uh, followed your instructions also to you know get this Bash Bunny payload running on my own, uh, it is a little bit of gymnastics. Now, I'm going to link in the show notes for anybody that wants to do this them themselves on their own Bash Bunny, but I will also foreshadow that uh, firmware version 1.6 is coming in just a few weeks where we're just going to roll all of those dependencies, bake them right into the firmware so that you can just you know copy-paste the payload and, and away you go with the entire Metasploit framework, which I hope will make a, a couple of folks happy and make all our jobs a little bit easier. I think that there's going to be a lot of power and a lot of really cool stuff that comes out with once the version 1.6 comes out. Uh, so tell me, what what do you envision as kind of the, the most practical, say, application of this payload? Where How do you see, you know, how do you envision this actually being used in a day-to-day? -day? What's the deployment like? Uh, I, I do think that this would be for the pen tester or the red teamer who is really doing like the overnight stay, uh, they maybe can't take in a lot of gear with them, or they just want to take in gear. They want to deploy Bash Bunny on a couple of workstations. You know, if they have a half a dozen or whatever, or a handful, deploy them on a few workstations. Let them do their work, and they can take their laptop and attack the rest of the network like normal. Uh, once the Bash Bunny gets a valid password, it f turns green, it flashes green. So you could just walk by your workstations, check to see which ones are green, and if they're green, you can start completing your attacks from there. Um, or they flash red if they fail, so you know that they failed and you can pull out the bunnies and record your notes like a, like a good reporter. 
Nice. Yeah. And I, I love how like simple this is because once you do have the dependencies installed and all set up correctly, it is just a matter of like, just like any other Bash Bunny payload, you know, you copy the payload over to your, your uh, directory. And like I have here, you know, on my, on my Windows box, if I go into, you know, payload switch one, uh, or actually it's, it's switch two, there it is. I've got my, I got my word list. I mean, this, it's no rock you, but you know, it's big enough and uh, I've got the payload and such. Uh, but Alternatively, I, I love that you go into loot, Jackalope, got the payload name, and then it's done based on the host name of the computer, which you get from, uh, you know, since you brought your own network, you get it from the DHCP lease. So you're saying, oh, great, I can plug this into multiple machines. They're all going to create a new folder for that machine name. And in addition to, you know, esoteric logs, you know, containing all of the you know, nuances of the Metasploit framework, uh, you know, for debugging and whatnot, I just get a little password txt with, hey, the password of that box. Uh, so as far as like the actual like user experience is concerned, I don't think this could be any easier. And I, I love to hear, I, I love what you did with like the whole like, oh, let's just kick it one more of the edge. Because in addition to actually then capturing that password, why not make the, uh, the icing on the cake and then uh, get that kind of Hollywood-esque, boom, it just like opens up the machine uh, logging in. That was uh, that was one of my main things. I mean, if you if you're a pen tester that isn't pen testing for another company, like if you're an internal pen tester, uh, it's really valuable to have that sort of zing effect uh, to be able to just yeah show your CEO or your CFO, CTO, whatever it is that you're showing, just have that C level experience of no, this is a problem. This is why we need to audit our firewall logs. This is why we need to adjust how we do admin passwords, so forth and so on. Um, and you can just plug in a thing. Boom, it's super obvious. They, Anybody can understand it. They can look at it and go, this is bad, how to fix. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, and you know, I know that a lot of Hack5 gear gets used in exactly those contexts. I can't tell you how many times, you know, I've heard like what happens when a Wi-Fi Pineapple Nano ends up in a boardroom and the CEO's phone's connected to it and then suddenly the purse strings open. And I think there's something very, um, you know, y you don't have to be a technical genius to know, hey, here's a laptop, locked, uh, a laptop that's locked. Let's plug in a Bash Bunny. The light goes from being yellow to being green and now suddenly the thing is logged in doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out that you've got a problem and maybe it's time to open up the budget for a little bit of IT spending, right? Absolutely. You know, um, a long time ago, I was asked, I was, I was doing a demonstration and I described it and I was asked by the people that I was demoing for, uh, I said, here's the idea, would you guys like to see it? And they said, we're all technical, we can all talk about this technically, what value is there in seeing it? And at the time, I was, I was a lot younger at the time. I, I didn't have a good answer for that. And since then, I've realized that actually seeing is believing, like for sure. Uh, and the main thing that you get out of seeing something is perspective. Uh, and that perspective is the thing that can drive change. With, without it, you, you can talk about it, but you don't have the perspective. It's not as concrete. So Ken, before I let you go though, I have to know why, why the jackalope payload? <laughs> so, so I'm originally from Texas and uh, jackalopes are really popular mythology there uh, as well as across the United States. But in particular in Texas, they're quite popular. Um, and jackalopes are a bunny, deer or antelope uh, combination like the uh, a chimera and i was thinking well we're taking a bash bunny and we're kind of squishing in this other really awesome multi-prong attack tool metasploit um those two a bunny plus a multi-pronged attack tool that's a jackalope i absolutely love it ken where can people find this payload and where can they you know hit you up on the social medias uh, they will be able to find this payload when I'm done refining it. I'm still working on it just a little bit just to make it absolutely perfect. Uh, they will be able to find it on the Hack 5 Bash Bunny Payloads uh, library under credentials under Jackload. Um, and if they want to hit me up, I'm on Twitter at Catatonic Prime. Uh, my GitHub is at Catatonic Prime as well. Uh, those are the best ways to get a hold of me. 
Awesome. Ken, really appreciate it. Love to see the creativity. And uh, I want to say to all of you guys, I welcome your feedback. I know uh, Ken is going to be eager to see, you know, what kind of feedback and ideas you have to finesse this payload as well. And just kind of like the can of worms that this really opens up. Uh, so let us know in the comments below in just a bit. We're going to check in on our Hack 5 gear giveaway. Uh, but thanks again, Ken. And we're going to take a quick moment and now thank our sponsor. Domain.com has all of your website needs from .com and .net to intuitive website builders. Create your online identity with their affordable, reliable tools. Even brand yourself with over 300 extensions from .club to .space. Domain.com loves Hack5, which is why you get 15% off domain names, hosting, and email when you check out with coupon code HACK5. When you think domain names, think domain.com. Now, last time we were doing a fun payload making your computer scream bloody murder when you eject USB drives from them, or any other USB peripheral for that matter. And I have to give mad props as well as a Hack $500 gift certificate over to Dark Neutrino, who points out that you can do the same in GNOME. You just got to convert that wave to OGA and place it in that directory, which, uh, you know, we should throw some love to the Linux folks. We should probably do the same thing to those Mac users. Anyway, uh, wow. Uh, if you would like to get some Hack5 gear of your own, hack5.org for that. And if you would like to win this week's uh, Hack5 gear giveaway, we have opened Pandora's box. I'm going to link uh, in the description to the show notes where if you would like to do this on your own Bash Bunny, YMMV, uh, as far as installing um, Metasploit and getting all of that up and running. Otherwise, if you just want to wait like a couple of weeks, we're going to have it rolled into firmware version 1.6. So this is going to be stupid, simple and, and included. But in any event, uh, I would love to see what is tickling your technologist in that department because there are now so many exploits and modules and auxiliary modules and, and scanners and post exploitation and so much cool stuff that can be done with that now on the Bash Bunny. So I would love to hear your creativity on that front. Uh, so links in the show notes to all of this kind of work in progress. And let me tell you, it is because it's like it's fast moving. That's the beautiful thing about this is uh, the snapshot in time where this infant of a payload just begins to start walking. And now you guys can contribute. So uh, get in over on the Hack5 uh, uh, payload repository and I would love to see your pull requests and contributions and all of that jazz uh, as well as your comments in the links below to the thing with the and this is the part where I say um, thank you again Ken uh, Catatomic Prime it's been an absolute pleasure and I will see you guys all here very soon in fact we have some special guests coming up on the program uh, uh, very very soon so stay tuned for that with that I'm Darren Kitchen trust your technologist <laughs>